Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Mondays with Michelle video. This week, we're going to explore two different archive websites, the Borthwick Institute and NICRO, the North Yorkshire County Record Office. We'll discuss how to search their online catalog, access the research guides, and we'll explore the digitized documents available online. Let's get started. The first website I'd like us to explore is for the North Yorkshire County Record Office, known as NICRO. Now you'll notice on the home page, we do have a search field up here, and you can type in a surname. You could type in a type of document, basically whatever term you want to search on. What we're going to do first is look at some of the other features on this website. So let's take a look at this middle section with a scrolling banner. And let's click on this option that says search the online catalog, a digital guide to our collections. So if I click on that, I'm taken to this welcome page. And one of the things I'd like you to notice is this page, and I'll just make the screen a little bit bigger here if I can, there. Let's make the text easier to read. This page has all types of guides to the information in their collections. And I would strongly recommend that you spend some time exploring what they offer. And these are all PDF documents. So by clicking on one of the guides, you can bring up that document and either print it, download it, or view it online. And if you take a look, there is quite a variety of topics covered. So this particular archive has information on nonconformist churches and chapel registers. That's guide number seven. They have all kinds of parish registers, census, land tax, tithe, and enclosure award records. That's guide number two. To give you some idea of what a few of the guides look like, this is guide number seven, the list of nonconformist church and chapel registers. So, this document, if we page through it, and again, it's got a key that explains the abbreviations used. This is listing alphabetically all of the chapels and the particular records that are available at NICRO. Similarly, if I go to the next example, Guide number two is the parish register, census returns, land tax, tithe, and enclosure awards. It also has a key to the abbreviations used. It's sorted by place, and they've set it up in columns indicating for each place which pieces of information are available and the date ranges. Now, you'll notice most of the screens on this website have a quick catalog search field at the top right of the page, this field here. So at any point, you can search either by surname, by topic, by place name, and it will give you a list of items that match your search criteria. So for example, if I want to see 
whether they have anything for my Renton ancestors. I could just type in the surname and click Quick Catalog Search. And you will notice I'm getting a list of items. It's displaying the first five of 14. I can force it to display all of the items. That way, I don't have to page down quite so often. And one of the nice features about this search screen is it does give some details as to what the records are about. So if I click on this document reference number on the far left column for this first entry, coroner's papers. If I click on this document reference number, it will open up that item and it will give me whatever description they provided. So it's an inquest heard at Littlethorpe on the body of Annie Irene Chivas Renton. And it gives the date. Now, if I go back to my search results, and I can do that just by clicking on the search results at the top of the screen here. If I search on Sonley as a surname, there's 24 entries. And again, if I go into the details of this entry on coroner's inquests. What you will find, there are quite a few different inquests covered. Mary Sonley is one of the inquests that's held. So bear in mind when you're looking at these archive catalogs, they have actually indexed by name wherever possible. So you can do surname searches. And for further information on how you can search their records, take a look at the how do I search the catalog link and it will give you more details on different ways that you can search for the information you need. Now you'll notice at the top of this screen, we have a tab called Key Collections. And if I click this Key Collections button, it gives me a list of some of the important collections of records held at this archive. And one of the ones I thought was interesting was this Pickering Board of Guardians records. Now the Board of Guardians records, that's your poor law records, the workhouse information. So what I thought was interesting is they say they hold records for 25 other Board of Guardians in North Yorkshire. So what you can do is search in the quick catalog search, Let's search on Board of Guardians and see which other boards show up. Now, if I click on the title field, that will sort this information alphabetically. You notice there are 106 entries. And if I take a look at the names, we've got the Aysgarth Board of Guardians. We've got Beedale. We have Bishop Thorpe, Clapham, we've got Flaxton, we have Helmsley Board of Guardians. So if your ancestors were in the workhouse, if they were receiving poor relief, then you may find, even if you don't find their names mentioned, in some of the records. When you do a surname search of the catalog, you may very well find them listed 
in these Board of Guardians records. So just remember, depending on how someone has created the description to the record sets, you're not always going to find the surname when you do a collection search with that search field. But it is definitely worthwhile searching because some of the documents, if they were referring to just a few individuals, those documents might have been indexed, as you saw, based on the surname. Now, there is another area of the website I'd like us to look at. And the quickest way to get back to that home page for the website is to go into Useful Links and click on North Yorkshire County Record Office. So now we're right back where we started. And if we take a look at some of these links at the bottom of the screen, you'll see one that's called Record Office Projects and Events. And we're going to click on that. And what you'll see here, if we scroll down, is some information on various projects, many of them funded in part through the Heritage Lottery. And the particular project that I'm going to look at today is called Grounds for Appeal. And this is a project that involved 6,000 appeal papers of men who wish to defer their military service or who conscientiously objected. So this project involved um, digitizing a lot of this paperwork and making it widely available. So there is a blog. There is a Flickr album with some photos. So let's take a look at the blog page first. So this gives quite a bit of information about the project. It also has some biographical information on particular individuals whose documents were in that collection. If you click the About link, it will give you some background on the project. Basically, their funding allowed them to start summarizing, listing, and digitizing case papers. So they do have the summaries available on their online catalog. And their blog posts show the research results for some of these individuals. There is also a link to their Flickr album. And Flickr is a photo sharing website. So if you'll notice, they have an album set up called Grounds for Appeal. And it is showing images and displays about this project that you can look at. Something else that they have on their website, if we look at back to the albums list at the top here, this particular archive has a number of different photo displays that you can look at. One of them that I thought was interesting was this Queen's Diamond Jubilee, the very last one here. And what they have done, because it's the Platinum Jubilee year, they have posted some photos from their archive of previous celebrations. So they've got 
images from the Queen's coronation in 1953. And if we scroll down, we've got pictures. There is a souvenir program from Helmsley for the coronation celebration. The other archive that I wanted to discuss is the Borthwick. And I know many of you are familiar with going to the Borthwick to look at the wills, but there's a lot of other resources that are available. So for example, if we click on the collections link at the side, we come to a page that describes their holdings. And again, they have guides and finding aids. If we click on guides and finding aids, we've got research guides. If we go into research guides and now guides for church records, I specified the church warden's account and I've got that document up here. Let's just take a look. Here is the guide. So it gives you a good explanation about what church wardens accounts are, how they're useful for research, where they found other related records, finding aids. So again, there's a lot of really great information in those research guides. If we now look at this link that says online resources, the Borthwick has some interesting information available on their website digitally. So they have the retreat archive online, which is, it says here, it's an institution for the care and treatment of mental health patients. And it was opened in 1796, so they have created a website or an online area where you can access these records on your computer. It says the digitization project has produced over 650,000 digital images. So that could be a very useful resource. Another resource they have is the Archbishop's Registers. They have the York Cause Papers. And they have the Lascelles Barbados Papers, which is the Barbados Slavery Archive. And I thought that was particularly interesting given the talks we've had recently regarding transportation of convicts and touching on the whole slavery aspect. So I'm going to show you some of the information in these online archives that the Borthwick offers. So the first one we'll look at is these Archbishop's Registers. And as you can see, if we had clicked on the Archbishop's Registers option, we'd go to this particular page. And it is basically listing all the registers available. So those of you who have traced your ancestors back many, many centuries will notice these records go back to 1200 and 1300s. So we're talking very old records. And if we were to click on one of these entries, it brings up the image and you can page through. And actually browse a page at a time. And I think you can also go directly to a particular section in the book. So if we go to 
page 35, you can then see the image and you can zoom in on it. So that's a very useful resource. One of the other resources, the cause papers. And we looked at the guides before. They do have a guide on cause papers explaining what they are. Basically, these are all the papers to do with the ecclesiastical court cases. And this particular guide goes into great detail explaining what's available. It also includes a, an example of a case. And if you clicked this link that says example case, you would get this. So this is a case from 1676. And it's going through all of the different documents that form part of that case. And if we take a look at the actual cause papers portion of their website, you can search by keyword. I just put in a keyword of matrimonial to get all of the matrimonial cases. Now, some have the images, some are just the details of the case. So if I look at this case here in the middle of the screen, that one does have images associated with it. And sometimes it will give you a summary of the case. But in this instance, it would just be looking at the actual document. And I can look at it full screen and click on the images to see the details and read about this particular case. And as you can see, there is a lot of information available about this particular case in the ecclesiastical courts. So I mentioned the LaSalle Slavery Archive. This particular one, as I said, I found quite interesting. And again, it has a search screen. So if we scroll down here, these are the kinds of entries. What you're seeing here is entries I had filtered on um, types of documents relating to the bills of sale. So the slave sales and exchanges. And if I search on that, this is what I've got. So these documents would actually describe the sale of the slaves. And to see the images, if I now click on images and transcriptions, I now have the option to view that image or the transcript. So if I click on this first item, I do have images now because my guess is they were probably using flash technology, which is no longer supported. So you're not able to see that larger view. However, they have provided a transcript. And if we look at the transcript, it's saying this document is basically giving the three Mulatto slaves, and it names the slaves. And it's saying it's affecting not just these three slaves, but any children that those slaves might have in the future. 
and it is giving them to one of his relatives. It says the slaves are granted to Richard Harding, his heirs and assigns. So these documents can again provide quite a bit of information about both the people who owned the plantations where these slaves lived. It gives you some idea of what their lives were like, what was typical. And if we go back to the main search screen, you could search on a particular plantation. You could search based on an individual's name. So these would usually be the plantation owners or the people who are mentioned in these documents. And on the right, we've got the classification of the types of documents. So you could search on that. And the last thing I wanted to mention, they also have the York Digital Library. And some of their collections can be viewed through the York Digital Library facility. So we've got the Archbishop's Registers, we've got Lord Halifax Diaries, there are various other um document collections that might be of interest so again i would encourage you for those archives that you are used to physically visiting take a look at their website because many of these archives have been digitizing some of their records in the last three or four years and making more of these collections available online I hope you enjoyed learning more about what each of these archives has to offer. There is a handout for this week's video. You'll find the link in the video description at the bottom of your screen. Thanks for watching.